With the goal of longevity, a major focus of the channel is to optimize biomarkers of as many organ systems as possible. Resting heart rate and heart rate variability provide information about the heart, but also the nervous system and the adrenal gland, and that's what we can see here. So resting heart rate and heart rate variability are obviously measures localized to the heart, but their levels are impacted by the balance between sympathetic nerves and parasympathetic nerves, including the vagus nerve. In addition, sympathetic nerve activation of the adrenal gland impacts resting heart rate and heart rate variability through norepinephrine and epinephrine. So when considering that this is an integrated measure, resting heart rate and heart rate variability are an integrated measure of at least three organ systems, what's optimal? And to address that, in this video, we'll take a look at how these metrics change during aging. And as I mentioned, a, ma a major focus of the channel is to optimize biomarkers of as many organ systems as possible. So I've been tracking it, both of these metrics, since 2018. So what's my data, as I now have more than 2,100 days of data? So let's start off by taking a look at how resting heart rate changes during aging. And that's what we can see here. These data are generated by WHOOP, and that's what I've worn since 2018. I'm not here to promote them, I'm not here to say who's the best, but that's what I've worn, so it's most relevant to show their uh, data for age-related changes. On the y-axis, we've got the average resting heart rate plotted against age from 20 to 50 years. And then for both women in red and men in blue, we can see that resting heart rate increases during aging. But what about for people older than 50 years? A clue for that comes for, from the data for women at 45 to 50 years. We can see that there's a small decline. So for ages older than 50, we've got to go to Fitbit data. As, as far as I know, there's no a WHOOP data that's been published at older ages, so older than 50. As far as I know, only Fitbit data it has been published like that. And that's what we can see here. So same setup, average resting heart rate on the y-axis plotted against age, and we can see now that the age range is from 20 to 85 years. In agreement with the WHOOP data though, we can see that resting heart rate does indeed increase up to around 50, followed by a decline from 50 to about 85 years. Now note that relatively low resting heart rates are found in both young and older ages. So is a low resting heart rate indicative of youth or aging? And this is where measuring heart rate variability is important. If you're only measuring your resting heart rate and you don't know your heart rate variability, it's possible to have age data and not youthful data. So HRV provides more context in terms of uh, identifying whether a low resting heart rate is youthful or aged. So to see why that's true, how does heart rate variability change during aging? And that's what we'll see here. So this too is Fitbit data. This is in a study of 8.2 million people. On the y-axis, we've got the HRV metric, which is the RMSSD. This is the root mean squared of successive differences. WHOOP uses this measure for HRV, and so does Fitbit. And on the x-axis, we've got age from 20 to 60 years. And then note that there are two traces, solid and dashed. The solid lines are HRV measured at 6 in the morning, and the dashed is at 6 at night. Regardless of which of those lines are used, we can see that HRV declines during aging. So now we can address the question, is a low resting heart rate indicative of youth or aging by bringing back our plot? At relatively younger ages, especially in 20-year-olds, we'd be more likely to see, or it's more likely uh, to, to expect, a low resting heart rate in conjunction with a relatively high heart rate variability. So values of somewhere around 75 uh, for HRV and 62, at least based on the Fitbit data, could be an average value. And then for someone close to my chronological age of 50 years, a relatively higher resting heart rate and a lower heart rate variability would be expected. All right, so then what about older than 60 years? So I'm not going to show it in this video. I've presented this data in other videos, but HRV continues to decline at least from 60 to 80 years. And with that in mind, at older ages, in 80 to 85 year olds, a low resting heart rate in conjunc conjunction with a low heart rate variability could be the, or would be expected to be the average value. All right, so now that we've defined this HRV resting heart rate com combination, what's my data? How well am I resisting age-related changes? And again, the goal is longevity on the channel. I wanna optimize biomarkers of as many organ systems as possible. So first, let's start off with the average yearly resting heart rate. This is when I started tracking in August of 2018 through the end of June 2024. So Q2 2024. Uh, so this is basically this first six months of 2024 update. And that's what we'll see here. So each dot is a single day's worth of data. 
Now, when I first started tracking, average yearly resting heart rate in 2018 was about 51 beats per minute, which is close to age expected at that time. And note that I've never been sedentary at any point. In fact, I was doing more, uh, actually longer weight training workouts, uh, you know, low intensity cardio every day. I was far more active then than I am now. And this goes to the idea of exercise prescription. What's the dose, frequency, and intensity of exercise where we can optimize HRV and resting heart rate, but also optimize physical function? Now, maybe that doesn't lead to the maximal physical function, but my goal is to optimize physical, cognitive, and, and you know, metabolic health and all of the biomarkers, and HRV and resting heart rate are a part of that equation. So then in 2019, average yearly resting heart rate, I was able to reduce it and then sequentially reduce it every year thereafter. All right, what about in 2024? So after the first six months, average resting heart rate is currently, or was through June 30th, 42 beats per minute. So starting from 2018, we can see that I've been able to reduce, consistently reduce resting heart rate from 51 to 42 beats per minute. Now, rather than just looking at year-to-year averages, we can compare these data or parts of it statistically using a two-sample t-test. So when I compare the data year over year, first six months of 2023, first six months of 2024, they are significantly different, meaning that the 42 beats per minute average thus far in 2024, first six months, is significantly lower than the first six months of 2023, where the average was 43.7 beats per minute. And we can see that the p-value is far below 0.05, as it's 2 times 10 to the negative 21. Additionally, we can compare 2024's six months of data versus where I started in 2018, and that too is significantly lower with a p-value of 1 times 10 to the one, negative 121th power. So um, highly statistically significant, the, the reduction in resting heart rate since 2018. But remember, is a low resting heart rate indicative of youth or aging? Now, the good news is that I've avoided the age-related increase, or at least the age expected increase based on published data. As you can see, from 45 to around 50 years, uh, an increase for resting heart rate would be expected, followed by that age-related decline. So am I just experiencing the age-related resting heart rate decline? And this is where looking at HRV is important. So that provides more context. So same setup over that same time period. Now we're going to take a look at average yearly heart rate variability, which is what we'll see here. So when I first started tracking, average yearly HRV was 47.3. And again, this is age expected data in 2018. I was, you know, far more active again, as I mentioned earlier than I am now, but yet had worse data. I increased HRV in 2019 and 2020, had a regression in 2021, as we'll see in an upcoming video that's likely linked to weight gain. And then I got leaner in 2022 and 2023, HRV correspondingly increased, and then in 2024, after the first six months, it's a small amount higher at sixth average so far in 2024 is 66.6 milliseconds. So we can see that since 2018, I've increased average HRV from 47 to 67 millisecond, milliseconds per day. So this idea that HRV is an individualized metric and it can't be improved much, it just simply isn't true. It just takes discovering the recipe, exercise, uh, you know, intensity, dose, frequency, and duration. Uh, in addition to other factors, which I'll cover in an upcoming video. Now, when using the statistics, using a two-sample t-test to compare year-over-year -year change, first six months 2023 versus first six months of 2024, we can see that 2024 is off to a good start. There's a 2.7 millisecond uh, improvement. You can see the p-value is 8 times 10 to the negative 5. So I've improved year-over-year -year by a small but statistically significant amount for HRV. And compared with where I started in 2018, that too is a significant improvement with a p-value of 3 times 10 to the negative 70. So now we can answer the question, is a low resting heart rate, in my case, indicative of youth or aging? So a relatively high heart rate variability plus a low resting heart rate, my average values thus far in 2024 of 67 for HRV and 42 for uh, resting heart rate is relatively youthful. For example, based on chronological age, uh, 35 for HRV would be expected and 56 for resting heart rate. So I've got better data relative to my chronological age for both HRV and resting heart rate. Note that I think I can do better. It may take me some time to discover the recipe, but uh, note that values in youth of HRV of 100 versus 42 or 40-ish 
Uh, and, you know, shout out Seenland. I see his data and it's like 100 over 40. So, uh, you know, that's the target in terms of, uh, you know, what a youthful HRV, a youthful and fit HRV and resting heart rate looks like. So I've got room, I've got work to do to get to that level. I, I'm confident I can get closer to that over time. It's going to take me some time now. All right, so what's contributing to improvement since 2018? And as I mentioned, body weight is a, is a part of that equation, but also the exercise prescription. And I'll have more on that in an upcoming video. I'm aiming for next week. So if you're interested in seeing what's under the hood in terms of what may be contributing, check it out. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more of my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links, including epigenetic testing, NED quantification, oral microbiome composition, at-home metabolomics, at-home blood testing with CyFox Health, which includes ApoB, but also Grimage, green tea, diet tracking with Coronamere, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, Buy Me A Coffee. We've also got merch, so if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Trying brand, as I've got on here, that link and all of the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.